This is episode 12 of Distro Delve Season 2, and we're going to be taking a look at the Mighty Mandraro 19 with XFCE, released on February 27th of 2020. Distro Delves is a video series where I review Linux distros while following a checklist which you can view and submit issues for on GitHub. Manjaro is a bit of a powerhouse among Linux distributions, being based on Arch Linux and having its own very stylish theme and branding, as well as developing several custom tools to make life on Arch easier. Now I don't think it's an overstatement to say that most Linux enthusiasts have used Manjaro as their daily driver, myself included, and there's a lot to like about it. I'm going to be taking an objective look at Manjaro in this review using the DistroDelves checklist and leaving my own personal experiences at the door since many of my issues with Manjaro come from longevity, or basically the longer you run it the more unstable it becomes, or the less stable it becomes. Now Manjaro uses a familiar live session with our friend Calamares doing the install. The install process is functionally the same as all of the others we've seen in the series besides this one section that asks you about your office suite preference which one you'd like to install. It's also worth pointing out real quick that Manjaro has another installer called Architect, but we won't be looking at that in this review. Upon logging in, new users will be greeted with this super awesome welcome app. It's called Manjaro Hello, and it covers most of the bases. I especially love that they put little glyphs next to the buttons that merely open the web browser. This app even has a built-in package manager of sorts. Admittedly, it feels a little under-polished, but it's like a curated list of apps that new users might be looking for after a fresh install, so that's pretty cool. DF is reporting that Manjaro is about 6.3 gigabytes for a fresh install, which is a little heavy if you ask me. And Free is telling us that Manjaro is consuming about 641 megabytes at idle. The CPU resources in HTOP read 75 tasks and 135 threads. Compare that to MX Linux, which we looked at previously, which also ran XFCE. It had 103 tasks, but 137 threads. Now Manjaro here is rocking a highly customized version of XFCE Desktop version 4.14. I find the Manjaro green theming to be beautiful, and all of the colors and designs on the desktop really mesh together so well. Except for maybe that logout button on the bottom right, that's like a wrong shade of green. It uses a themed whisker menu, which is very functional and the search works good. It uses Cavantum so that the Qt and GTK apps look native when sitting next to each other. The theme itself mixes a bit of dark and a bit of light here and there, but there are themes for just light and just dark. Now Manjaro ships with an absolutely absurd number of backgrounds. The default one is pretty good, but there's lots more here. Seems like there's every wallpaper for every Manjaro release, as well as some XFCE wallpapers and probably some stock photos filtered in. Now in the way of custom apps, Manjaro has quite a few. There's the Manjaro settings manager, which greatly helps installing kernels, drivers, as well as like managing user accounts and date stuff. There's this weird notification manager which basically handles the notification for like kernel updates, which is odd. There's Pamac, which is just a front end for installing and removing packages. I don't think it's really a Manjaro exclusive thing, I think it's an Arch thing at this point, but it's a killer package manager front end. And then there's this new application called Bow Bowa? Bow? Bow? It helps manage his app images, snaps, and flat packs, and it's kinda uh and then finally, there's this Manjaro application utility, which it, it seems like a list of curated apps. It's the same thing for the Manjaro Hello application, but it's standalone. It's, it's kind of weird. Now let's talk about the default apps that Manjaro ships with. This is Manjaro XFCE, but it uses apps from other projects like Mate and Gnome. It feels like there's an app for pretty much everything you can imagine pre-installed without a bunch of duplicates. It's quite impressive, honestly. I recall older releases of Manjaro installed way too much of everything under the sun, but it looks like they've trimmed it back and this is way more streamlined than previous versions. In NeoFetch, we've got the surprisingly blocky Manjaro logo along with the official name, Manjaro Linux. For running Linux kernel 5.4, there were about 1,103 packages installed. We've got Bash 5.0. The desktop environment is XFCE 4.14. The theme is Matcha C, along with a modified papyrus icon set, and the terminal font is just the generic monospace font. System updates can be done through the update applet or through Pamac. I updated through Pamac, and it was super quick. Granted, there was one package, but still. The NVIDIA drivers, or basically any other firmware proprietary driver, can be installed through the Manjaro Settings Manager. This app sort of clashes with the rest of the custom applications. In fact, 
All of the custom applications have their own weird style, and the settings manager is no different. It looks like it was designed with GTK2 back in 2010. It's functional, but it's not pretty. Manjaro ships with a few different driver choices, and the auto install opted for the 440 series of driver. For the external media segment, Manjaro was able to mount and dismount the external SSD and the USB SD card reader without issues and without root. Nice. Taking a quick look at the archive formats, Manjaro was able to open and extract all of the archives just fine, including that pesky RAR file. In the way of codec support, Manjaro played all of the audio files just fine, but it opened the MP3 file in Audacious instead of VLC like the others. And for the video stuff, Manjaro was able to play back all of the videos smoothly without any stuttering or issues at all. Now for the third party and app support, Manjaro is unique in that it embraces all of the formats, despite having access to the Arch only format, if you want to call it that, the AUR, or the Arch user repository. Caden Live opened and looked great, and so did Etcher, which if you recall did not open in the previous Debian based distros which we looked at earlier in the series. Oddly though, the flat ref file was not recognized by the file manager, that feels a bit like a bug to me. And for managing your snaps, flat packs, and app images, there's that strange tool, Bawa, or whatever, which I'm not going to try to pronounce again. It's really weird. I mean, like, look at the styling. It doesn't look like GTK, and it doesn't look like cute, and as far as I know, it's not Electron either. And it doesn't find all of the available apps either, like from App Hub. It's a really odd tool, and I'm not even sure why it's here. And look at this install percentage. 110%, huh? If we go over to Pamac, we can enable Snap support, and POW, we have the Snap Store available right from Pamac, not to mention the AUR. Hopping over to the recording section, OBS detected our NVIDIA card and shows the NVENC recorder with a sane output size, and I was able to play back the rendered footage without any issues. For network discovery, my printer was detected on the network, but my Windows laptop was not. I was able to SMB into it from the file manager and SSH into my Linux workstation, just the same without any issues. Now Manjaro's printer support threw me through a bit of a loop here. So there's like two different apps I found for managing printers. There's the Cups web portal, which didn't work. And then there's the HP driver manager, which also didn't work. Now I thought XFCE had a built-in printer manager thing in the settings, but I couldn't find one. I tried to print a web page just for fun and sure enough, there's my damn printer. I was able to print to it too, so I'm guessing this is just like bad or weird configuration on Manjaro's side. Bluetooth was a bit messy too. There's two different Bluetooth apps, one for adapters and one for devices. I feel like we've seen this before. It asked me to enable Bluetooth support, which did nothing. I opened the other app and I had to manually search for devices and it found my controller, but then the app locked up when I tried to pair. I was able to pair the controller eventually, and then I played some Mad Max. Remember the Netrunner review in the previous episode? Mad Max was just a huge mess? Well, here it is, on Manjaro and it's flawless. And look, I'm able to talk to this guy without punching him in the face first. Not only did the controller work great, but the frame rate sat at a solid 30 frames per second almost the whole time. Honestly, I'm a bit surprised at just how well it's running here. This is not a powerful system, as you know and I'm running Mad Max at like, an, it's like 30, between 25 and 30 frames a second. It's sweet. Next we'll take a look at Overwatch, which did not have frame rates as stable as Mad Max, but they weren't capped at 30 either. But just look how smooth this is. Granted this isn't a benchmark or anything, but I am pretty sure this is the smoothest we've ever seen Overwatch run on the Distro Delves rig. This is pretty damn impressive. And last, we'll take a look at Sourbrot, and I cranked the graphics settings up as far as they would go without enabling motion blur. This is an older game, but as you can see from the frame rate counter at the bottom right, if you can see that, 59 to 60 frames per second all around. Very nice. So how will Manjaro measure up to the current leader of the Geekbench CPU benchmark tests? Curiously, Manjaro came in second in almost every CPU bound test compared to MX Linux, the reigning champion. The GPU test results were a mixed bag with MX taking the lead on some and Manjaro taking the lead on others. Now, these tests are interesting, but the data isn't terribly meaningful since we saw in the gaming section that Manjaro blew pretty much everyone else away in terms of FPS numbers and sheer smoothness. Now I ran Manjaro for probably 6 months last year with a month or two off and on, and I stopped using it in December. After reviewing it for this video, would I use it again today? Probably not. Manjaro is a pretty sweet distro and it has a lot going for it. 
It's fast, flexible, configurable, offers good desktop and gaming performance, but the problem that I've always had with it is reliability. Manjaro is really good, until it's not. Sometimes it's an update that goes bad, sometimes it's a setting that gets changed, and then pow, the system's unstable. That could be said about any distro, but I've personally had the most trouble with Manjaro in that regard. Manjaro is aiming to be a good all-around desktop-focused distro, and I think that they accomplish that. If you enjoy using it, you should stick with it. Manjaro 19 is the best Manjaro yet. I really hope you enjoyed this episode of Distro Delves. If you want to contribute to the series and submit a new distro for review or update the script, hop on over to the Distro Delves repo and check it out. If you want to support me and the channel, you can become a patron and enjoy posts about behind the scenes stuff, history about the channel, links to a playlist with old and archived videos. I appreciate all your support, and thanks for watching.